Well, hello, and welcome to my latest video. It is, yes, wait for it, it is New Bike Day. Only not quite New Bike Day. It's New Second Hand Bike Day. Yes, I have a new bike, but it's second hand. And you're going to want to know what bike it is, but you're going to have to wait with me just a few minutes. Because, as you may know, if you're a regular uh, viewer of my channel, uh, my current policy, my latest policy, uh, rolled out great fanfare uh, a year or two ago is that I will not get another bike unless I dispose of a bike okay so I've reached peak bike and when you reach peak bike the only way you can get another bike is to get rid of one of the bikes from your existing stable so if you use the analogy of a horse let's say I had four horses and I wanted to get another horse I would have to lose or or find a way of getting rid of it, even eat if I was a Frenchman, which I'm not, even eat one of my beloved horses. But we're not talking about horses, we're talking about bikes. I don't know if the French eat bikes, but certainly I don't eat my bikes. I haven't eaten my bike, I've gotten rid of my bike, so I can replace it with another bike. And what bike have I gotten rid of? Well, if you saw my video about 10 reasons not to buy a Bompton, you might be thinking, well, why did you get a Bompton in that case? And if you're thinking, uh-oh, he hasn't gotten rid of the Bompton, has he? Well, well, ladies and gentlemen, yes, I have gotten rid of the Bompton. I've had it for uh, less than three months. Uh, I've probably done about 150 miles on it, so more than most people who commute on a Bompton have had it for 10 years. But I decided to get rid of it. Why did I decide to get rid of it? Well, there's a couple of reasons. First one, uh, the bike that I got, and we will get to it, was a bike that I wanted, okay? And the bike that I had, which was a Bompton, I thought, well, do I really want a Bompton? And then I happened to come across somebody who had what I wanted and wanted a Bompton in return. And I thought, well, he's got what I want and I've got a Bompton which I'm happy to swap, so why don't we do a deal? So we did the deal. So that's, less, that's reason number one, if you like. The opportunity presented itself, and as you know, if opportunity knocks, answer the door. So I answered the door, and the other reason is about the Bompton is I really like the Bompton. Okay, don't get me wrong. I think the Bompton is in many respects the most versatile and perfect bike you can have for absolutely practically everything. But I'm not sure if the Bompton that I had was the one that I wanted because it's too fucking heavy. Now, Practically any other Bompton I get would also be as heavy, although not if it was a titanium one, if I was able to get a titanium one, and possibly even a P-line, which is like the normal one, but a bit lighter. So that is the reason. And what did I get? Well, I'm afraid you're going to have to wait a little bit longer, but all will be revealed. Uh, no, I'm not uh, stripping down. I'm not revealing myself, but I am going to reveal the bike that I've got. So let's go over and let's look. This is like, um, what's that? No, you know that naked attraction? Okay, so we'll do a kind of naked attraction thing where we'll kind of unveil bits of the bike, bits of the bike. We'll start at the kind of lower part, then we'll get up to the genitals, and then you look at the bike and you think, oh, no, not for me. And then you get up to the upper half and you think, oh, yeah, yeah he's all right, she's all right. Then you get up to the head and you think, well, maybe not. And um, the, the thing they don't do on naked attraction, of course, is you don't get to have a chat with them to find out whether it's all actually in the personality as opposed to in, in the body and the looks, which, of course, we know it isn't. It's in the personality. But... Uh, we're not talking naked attraction, <laughs> we are talking bikes, so let's unveil, yes, let's get the pants off, get the knickers off the bike and let's show it in all its glory, so uh, without further ado, come with me. Well here it is, revealed in all its naked attraction glory, and if you want to know what it is, if you haven't guessed, it is a molten, yes, a molten TSR 30 to be precise, 30 because it's got 30 gears, a triple front chain set and a rear cassette, and a TSR, I believe, because it's named after a type of plane. Well, I don't know what type of plane, although I suspect it might well be a TSR. Anyway, there you go. Those people who know more than I do can leave a comment down below. Uh, it's made of steel, uh, steel frame by uh, steel fork as well, unusually although it has a carbon seat post and a carbon stem, which we'll focus on a little bit closer in a moment. Just feast your eyes on that. Now, if you're familiar with the Molten, uh, everything that I'm about to say you will know all too readily already, but if you're not familiar with the Molten, uh, the key differences 
I suppose, from a normal bike is, first of all, this fascinating frame called a space frame. That's the first thing you notice that makes it look particularly different, as well as the small wheels. But you can get lots of bikes now with small wheels, not least, of course, the Bompton. But the thing about the Malton is that it has suspension front and rear and the front suspension is here it's called leading link suspension and you'll see that it appears to have uh, two forks it has a, a fork here and then a fork here and what that means is that this rear fork can go up and down in a small amount when it hits a bump or a rough surface and that smooths out the ride and it really does work there is also suspension at the rear, which we'll focus on now. The, focus, the, suspen the suspension at the rear is this particular block there. And if you're familiar with the Brompton, uh, you'll notice that that is very similar to the design of the Brompton, although unlike the Brompton, uh, which doesn't have suspension at the front, the Malton does have suspension at the front. The other thing that makes it significantly different from the Brompton, you will no doubt know, that the Bompton is a folding bike. The Malton is not a folding bike, although that is a common misconception about it. The other thing is that you'll notice that uh, Bompton has sort of proprietary components, whereas the Malton has standard road bike components, has a drop bar in this instance, and it has a Campagnolo Veloci uh, group set on this particular build. There you can see the carbon seat post with a Brooks Cambion saddle on top. And there you can see a bottle cage attached to the seat tube. The stem, as you can see here, gives you a certain amount of adjustment to raise the bars either higher or reduce them lower. A Campagnolo chain set, front and rear derailleurs as you would get on a normal, if you like, standard road bike and there's the rear cassette. Uh, rim brakes, uh, obviously as you know rim brakes are, for, are forever. Uh, you will know uh, if you know anything about bikes, about bikes or what I think about bikes is that disc brakes are absolutely shit so of course I have to have rim brakes. Now although the bike does not fold the bike does come apart or can come apart uh, hopefully not while you're riding uh, in the middle and it comes apart by removing this particular bolt, unscrewing this little wheel here where there is a connector that holds the frame together and uh, uh, detaching or undoing these quick release uh, cable connectors that you have here. So that is quite a similar uh, design that you might have on an SNS coupled bike uh, if you're familiar with that design. There you can see it's made of Reynolds 525 steel. Steel is real, carbon is rubbish. This particular bike is uh, fitted with mudguards there, mudguards at the rear and a mudguard at the front. It's also got a, a rack which uh, actually I th thought that rack was built in but perhaps it's not. Perhaps it's an addition that is bolted here and here. Uh, anyway there is a, uh, a bag that fits on the rack and connects also to the seat post there. Now I swapped my Bompton uh, with this Malton uh, from a guy called Stuart Price and if you look up his uh, YouTube channel which is called Stew's Hikes and Bikes uh, you can see some uh, very interesting nice enjoyable videos that he makes. Anyway when I got the bike from Stuart he had fitted this particular front light and a similar light at the rear. So I, I got the bike home and I was playing around with it. I could not find a switch to operate the light. So I phoned up Stuart and I said, Oi, mate, what's going on? And uh, what he said to me is that it's a kind of dynamo setup. And if we just move the camera around somewhere, she'll be able to find it. Yeah, just there, you can see, sorry where I'm pointing, uh, is like a, a magnet which is uh, attached to the wheel, a bit like how you would use a, a cadence sensor. And what that magnet does uh, is drive a kind of dynamo power to the lights without a connection between the two, which I must say I've never heard of, but sounds like a brilliant idea. Now, uh, it provides a kind of running light, a bit like a Volvo 
as you can imagine, not really strong enough to be seen by, but in terms of uh, a light that allows you to uh, uh, to be seen by uh, other road users, I think that's a brilliant idea, not something I've ever heard of. Uh, you can see there that the um, this Molten uh, is fitted with Alex rims and Durano, Schwalbe Durano tyres. There's a second bottle cage there that you can see underneath the uh, what, what you would call the down tube, I suppose. So in the great tradition of uh, naked attraction, you're saying to yourself, I don't know, I'm not interested in what it looks like, Julian. I want to know what it rides like. And uh, that's exactly what I feel. And, uh, well, I had a, a 10 mile ride on it uh, when I went to see Stuart and swapped over my Bompton with him. And uh, it rides like, like a road bike, which is what it is. It's a road bike with small wheels. Uh, the front suspension is uh, something that you get used to um, and something that works in terms of bumpy roads, bumpy road surfaces. Not quite so straightforward if you're trying to stand up on the bike because you noted the, notice the suspension much more. But you can adjust it uh, by uh, adjusting a couple of bolts on the leading link suspension. So I may play around with that to see what it's like. But it's very effective and therefore makes for a very comfortable and a very smooth a smooth ride, uh, particularly if you're riding uh, like I do around Kent, where the roads are absolute shite. Now, why why did I want it? Well, I mean, just look at it. Why 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 do you even have to ask yourself that question? Uh, I used to have a Molten. In fact, I might even have had this this particular model, but I sold it rather quickly for rather foolish uh, reasons, which have currently escaped me. So uh, I wanted a Molten because I wanted a Molten. That's uh, the first thing, I suppose. Uh, the second thing is, I suppose, I found. Uh, the, the, I like the idea of the way the Brompton folded up, uh, but found it too heavy to carry. Whereas this, not folding up, but coming apart, uh, may make it easier to transport in my car or in my camper van. Now, you can uh, take it apart in the middle and take off various bits, and I'm told it will fit into a suitcase. I tend to use, when I go abroad, I use my normal road bike, 700c wheels, and I put it into a Cycon bike bag. But it is a bit of a faff and it is pretty big. Uh, so I might think about, um, once I've gone for some kind of long rides on the Molten, I may think about using this for a longer trip, taking it aboard, uh, taking it apart and putting it into a suitcase, which is uh, 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 could be a good thought. Uh, it's got, by the way, I'm not sure if I mentioned this, uh, Brooks leather bar tape and... Uh, I think you'll agree that is pretty attractive. If you're looking at somebody on uh, Naked Attraction, they had leather bar tape on, you think, yes, I'll have me some of that. Thank you very much. So, the Molten TSR 30. What else can I say about it? I absolutely love it. I think it looks brilliant. It's different. Um, it's uh, not widely known in this country, although it was uh, designed by Alex Molten back in the uh, early 1960s. Uh, who, who designed the suspension on the original Mini. So uh, you do see some of them about. They're a bit sort of, a bit old schooly, I suppose. But isn't it nice to get back to uh, a proper bike with proper rim brakes, with proper tyres, none of this tubeless shit, none of these disc brakes, none of these, you know, these fancy integrated handlebar tyres, cable bollocks. Just a proper, decent, made in Britain, steel, bicycle on which I can see out the last few years of my miserable life. So thanks very much for watching and see you next time.